Just a little while ago, we passed 25 years of the Dreamcast. It's actually unbelievable to think that it was 25 years ago that the original Dreamcast was released. And honestly, it's one of my favorite consoles. Obviously, as we all know, it's actually the last console that Sega ever made after that. They just went on to publish games and make games and sell them on other systems. And one could argue a lot of the spirit of what Sega made back in the day was lost after their consoles went down under. I mean, I'd done as much as I could to support the Dreamcast back in the day. I bought as many games as I could allow back then for like how much money I had as a kid. I'll never forget the first time I ever seen the Dreamcast. It was actually at a movie center and they were previewing the Dreamcast to kids and everybody there. I first got to see Sonic Adventure, an original tech demo for Sonic Adventure, and the thing blew my mind in comparison of like what we were actually playing back then, which was the likes of PS1 games. But nonetheless, I wanted to do a little top five list of some of my favorite Dreamcast games that I still play today, and uh, I would like to share some of those games with you guys. Now, the top five list might actually change next week, for all I know, but I mean, it remains roughly around the same here. So here is some of my top five games, and I'll probably do a little honorable mention at the end of some games that I think still kind of belong in that top five. Guys, back in the late 90s and early 2000s, you could not enter an arcade without seeing or hearing The House of the Dead 2. Obviously, this game was a sequel to the original House of the Dead that came out in March of 1997. And I can honestly say we never really got a really good port of that game back in the day. Like, we had the Sega Saturn version of the House of the Dead, but it never played anywhere near as good as the arcade version. But when it came to House of the Dead 2, it was basically arcade perfect on the Dreamcast because the Dreamcast used the same kind of hardware as the arcades. So that basically meant we had perfect arcade experiences for a lot of the games that Sega had made for the arcades back then. And that was a pretty special thing because up until that point, you always had like ports of arcade games, but you never actually had like arcade perfect equivalent games. But that all changed with the Dreamcast. And I think that's one of the things that really stands out about the Dreamcast is how much it actually tried to give us the arcade experience at home properly for the first time ever. It's really hard to believe that this game actually came out back in 1998. Obviously, it came out in 1999 for the actual Dreamcast. The USA got this as a launch title. Here in the UK, we actually got it like a month later, I think. But we never got it as a proper launch title, but it might as well have been. But um, as far as I'm concerned, this is one of the most important titles for the Sega Dreamcast and the arcade scene in general. And it's a shame to see that we've not really had like proper re-releases of this game over the years. The last known re-release of this game, I think, was honestly back in the Wii back in 2008. It's been that long ago. We have had like no up-to-date version of House of the Dead 2 celebrating this game's lifespan. And what it done for gaming in general, and I truly think that's a wee bit upsetting because I think House of the Dead 2 is a big deal and probably one of the best House of the Dead games that existed. Sure, the game's got like a corny story and it's not the best or anything, but I don't think we should be sitting and nit nitpicking like the story of House of the Dead games and stuff because that's not entirely what they're about. Would it be sick in this day and age to get like a brand new House of the Dead game that maybe took on a different thing entirely and done like a really special thing with its story and got you invested. That would be a cool thing to see in this day and age. But I do miss some games from back in the day that didn't take themselves too serious. They were just trying to get you into the action and enjoy it and have some fun. And I truly do miss that time in gaming and House of the Dead 2 is a prime example of one of the best periods in gaming and we can thank the Sega Dreamcast for giving us that experience at home. Resident Evil Code Veronica originated on the Dreamcast of all places. The first one that was not on the PS1 system was developed with next gen in mind on the Dreamcast. Obviously this game got ports to the PS2 and GameCube and later the PS3 and Xbox 360, but guess what? Those are actually the Code Veronica X versions of the game. The only game that was the original version of Code Veronica is still only playable on the Dreamcast of all places. A lot of people would have you believe that the Code Veronica X version of Code Veronica is the definitive experience of Code Veronica. 
Well, that's not entirely the case if you are a little bit of a Resident Evil enthusiast like myself. The only intended version of the original game is on the Dreamcast here, and there's actually some story changes in the X version that changed from the original version. One such scene is actually when Alexia Ashford is actually taken on Albert Wesker. In the original intended version of the game, she actually beats up Albert Wesker and makes him look weak, thus showing everybody how powerful she is as a major villain. In the Code Veronica X version though, they kind of reversed the roles and made Albert Wesker able to withstand a beating from her and actually make her look weak in return. In my opinion, it actually like ruined the villain of the game a little bit and made her look very weak. The only way of actually like seeing the original intended version is on the Dreamcast. It's actually crazy to think that because they never gave us like a port of this game so people could see it. A lot of people are just aware of the Code Veronica X version of the game and never actually got to experience what the original is like. This is a very important time for like Resident Evil's career in gaming and I think it would be great if they actually re-released the Dreamcast version of the game in a collection. Obviously it doesn't have to be like the main version of the game or anything because most people are used to Code Veronica X but don't let this version of the game die on Dreamcast alone. It's a shame that you actually need a Dreamcast to even see the original intended vision of Code Veronica. I think it would be great for Resident Evil fans to see and just get it out there that another version of Code Veronica still exists out there, one that looks pretty good and feels pretty good and it's still on a Dreamcast. You know I could sit here forever and actually talk about Shenmue, it's one of my favourite games of all time. At one point in time it was my favourite game ever. I was going to include both Shenmue games on the list here but I think I'll only include Shenmue 1 as a whole because I think it's a wee bit, wee bit unfair to put both games on here, even though I think both games are absolutely amazing, and sometimes I can't really tell which one I like the most. It's like one of those questions where I just cannot actually say if I like Shenmue 1 more than 2. It's, it's too hard a thing to answer, because there's so many things about Shenmue 1 that are amazing, and so many things about Shenmue 2 that are amazing, but one thing I can say is they are as good is what people have led you to believe. It's a truly fascinating franchise. Um, I remember like the first time I was ever told about it from one of my friends, he was like, you know, you get a real job in this game and you do real daily activities, you can go to the arcade. I mean, it didn't sound too like impressive right away, but I'll tell you, like the first day I actually got that game, I couldn't believe how realistic it looked and felt to play. Obviously, this game is actually like uh, credited as one of the reasons why Sega had to stop making consoles eventually, because at the time it was one of the most expensive games ever made, if not the most expensive game ever made at the time, upwards of almost $70 million back then. But some of that cost also like took part for like Shenmue 2 back then, but I don't think a lot of people are aware of that. They just count it as like the one game. There's a lot of misconceptions about that whole thing, but it was one of the most expensive games of the time. And it would be silly to think if it didn't um, affect Sega in some way because it didn't sell as well as anticipated. But that's because the Dreamcast had a lot of problems as well. It's a real shame that it never sold as much as it did because the Dreamcast had so many problems back then with piracy and stuff like that. Piracy was quite a big deal back in that day and age. And when you could literally play like fake burned games on the Dreamcast Obviously that was going to affect sales back then, and I think that did affect the sales of games like Shenmue. For years we wanted HD remasters of Shenmue 1 and 2, and finally we actually got them back in, I think it was 2019, the Shenmue 1 and 2 collection that D3T actually ported. Now I always say I respect D3T and Sega for, ev for even giving us these HD remasters. I'm truly grateful that other people got to experience the games, but... The thing is, the Dreamcast versions of the games are still the best versions of the games, period. There is so many bugs, the, the game is absolutely riddled with bugs in the HD remasters. I couldn't tell you how many people I watched on Twitch playing the HD remasters just 
slate and Shenmue because of all these bugs. How did people put up with this stuff back in the day? Well, in reality, the Dreamcast version of the game doesn't have any of those bugs. It's ridiculous. The actual original version of Shenmue was delayed by a whole year to fix bugs, but in this day and age, they re-released the HD remasters full of bugs. And like I say, I'm glad people get to play them, but things like the arcade games, which are a big part of Shenmue 1, are almost unplayable to people like me who grew up playing Shenmue because they feel so out of sync and completely different. If you compare like the Dreamcast version of the arcade games to the HD re-release of the arcade games, it's completely different. They don't even function the same. Um, there's so many bugs in the game that D3T never went back and fixed as well, and it's a real shame. The audio bugs as well, a lot of the music is not the same. The Dreamcast versions of the games are the best versions of the games still to this day, but it's just a shame you actually need the Dreamcast in order to play those ones. I'll always go back on a yearly basis and play them because that's kind of like in my yearly routine these days for video gaming. I'll always go back and play them on the Dreamcast. You can't get an experience like the Dreamcast versions of Shenmue and it's one of the reasons I even still have a Dreamcast. At the time of making this video, it's absolutely crazy to think that Sonic Adventure 2, one of the best Sonic games ever made, is actually 23 years old. That is crazy. I actually remember the first day of getting Sonic Adventure 2 and was kind of taken back by how different I actually was from Sonic Adventure 1. It's pretty hard to actually turn around and say that I like every aspect of Sonic Adventure 2 more than Sonic Adventure 1 because it feels like they kind of come as a pair, you know? Like there's aspects about Sonic Adventure 1 that are truly fantastic, like the open world design of Sonic Adventure 1 is so cool. But there's some aspects of Sonic Adventure 1 that are lacking that they completely fixed in Sonic Adventure 2. I think for me, I think Sonic Adventure 2 kind of like edges it out over Sonic Adventure 1 as being a more complete product than Sonic Adventure 1. Because like Sonic Adventure 1 feels a bit more like a huge tech demo, like a proof of concept of what they wanted Sonic to be at the time. And it's still great to play. But Sonic Adventure 2 feels like a more tight, compact experience being like level based than it is. And obviously you get to play so many different characters in Sonic Adventure 2. It was obviously the debut of Shadow the Hedgehog as well. Um, and I remember watching the trailer constantly back in the day because I was that excited for Sonic Adventure 2. And the, tra the trailer that they actually showed back then was the one where it was Sonic and Shadow fighting for the first time. I think Sonic Adventure 2 is a pretty hard one to top. People have some immense nostalgia for that game and I genuinely think it's one of the best Sonic games they ever made. It's got one of the best OSTs that you will ever hear in a Sonic game as well. So. No matter where you play it, you'll always get a good experience with Sonic Adventure 2. I think you can still play it on PC and backwards compatible on like the Xbox One. It's almost everywhere you can play it in this day and age. And I think with uh, the new movie coming out, Sonic Adventure 2 is a great game to experience now if you've never played it before. When it comes to fighting games, there's, there's very few perfect fighting games out there. And even then, you'll have a lot of people like uh, debate like what's bad and what's good about a fighting game. But I think... When it comes to the original Soul Calibur, there's a reason why it got so many perfect scores back in the day and why it got so many Game of the Year awards. You know, it's got a Metacritic still to this day of like 98 as one of the best games of all time and it happens to be a fighting game. Do you know how crazy that is that a fighting game gets that many awards? It's absolutely crazy. It's one of the best fighting games ever and it happens to be like one of the best launch titles that's ever existed for gaming history. Um, obviously Soul Edge was the first game in the series that ever came out on the PS1 and that was a good game back in the day as well for being unique. Soul Calibur was always trying to do new things for games back then and it done a lot of new things because the arcade version of Soul Calibur back in the day actually has like very similar to like PS1 graphics. Uh, the Dreamcast version is better than the arcade equivalent version of this game. That is crazy to say and actually think, but it's true. The, uh, the Dreamcast was doing new things back in the day. There was a lot about the Dreamcast that was ahead of its time and Soul Calibur was one of those games. 
It's a real shame that not a lot of people actually got to play Soul Calibur 1. If you ask a lot of people in this day and age what their first Soul Calibur game was, they'd probably turn around and say Soul Calibur 2. And obviously Soul Calibur 2 was important in gaming history. There was a lot of things that was unique about that game. Obviously you got uh, Link on the GameCube version, you got Spawn on the Xbox version, you got Heihachi on the PS2 version, three different versions of the games. A lot more people got to play the game because it was multi-platform. But you could only play Soul Calibur 1 on the Dreamcast, which is why I don't think it's as largely remembered as Soul Calibur 2. But people like me who were there will always remember this game for how important it was for video game history. Just look how beautiful this game looks as well, and it's like 25 years old. Is that no crazy? I mean, I know I'm playing on like a HD Dreamcast here, but this is still like the intended graphics for the game, just on a digital output system so we can make it look good on our modern TVs. Uh, I cannot believe how good it looks and how good it still plays. And I'll tell you, one of the best things about this game still does not get replicated in modern fighting games, and that's how good its single player content is. Yes, in this day and age, there's obviously a fixation on everybody playing against real people, ranked modes and everything, but so many people out there who play fighting games don't want to play against real people. If you don't have good single player content, then a lot of people aren't interested because that is actually what the mainstream audience likes the most. It's actually like really fun single player content in fighting games, which is hard to pull off. But all they need to do is look back at the original Soul Calibur as a blueprint for some of the best single player content that's ever existed in fighting game history. I can't praise this game enough for how legendary it is as a fighting game and you know, this game got re-released back in the Xbox 360 Live Arcade days in 2008, and guess what it actually did for its re-release? It was missing the single player content, it just gave you like arcade mode. It was actually nuts how bare bones that re-release was. And there's not been any other version of the game released since. I think there's a mobile version at best, but the only way to play the full intended experience of Soul Calibur 1, one of the most legendary fighting games, highest scoring fighting game of all time, 10 out of 10 across the board, multiple game awards, is only still playable on a Dreamcast. That is absolutely nuts to think that Namco have never like ported this to modern systems so people can replay it or anything. And I think that's a game and crime personally. Nonetheless, I've went on long enough about some of my favourite games here on the Dreamcast system. I know I was going to do some honourable mentions. There's obviously loads of games on the Dreamcast that deserve honourable mentions or could easily still be in this top five. Marvel vs Capcom 2, Crazy Taxi. There's so many games on the Dreamcast that are absolutely fantastic, but I can't put them all in a top five or anything. And my top five might still change next week. I still think the Dreamcast was one of the most ambitious video game consoles of all time and it really showcases just how ahead of the curve Sega always were in trying to give people the best gaming experiences back in the day. I mean this machine had online gaming and everything and it was free. It's crazy. I mean nowadays you don't even have like free online gaming. It's just crazy how much the Dreamcast and Sega always wanted to, to give us with each generation of their systems. And it truly sucks that we don't um, get to replay some of these amazing classic titles on modern day hardware. I mean, we did just get a re-release of Marvel vs. Capcom 2 finally, and it was a legit port of the Dreamcast version of that game. And I, for one, want to see more Dreamcast ports of games like Soul Calibur and other games coming to modern day systems so that we can all play and enjoy them. Guys, thank you very much to anybody who made it through any of this video. It's definitely a bit more of a longer one and we're talking about one of my favourite consoles of console past here. But I really wanted to pay some of my respects to one of my favourite machines that I've ever played before and the 25th anniversary deserves that from me. Uh, I would like to tackle more videos like this on my channel because I truly do enjoy talking about some of my favourite gaming experiences that I've ever had. And uh, I would like to hear some of your favorite gaming experience with the Dreamcast games, Dreamcast library, or maybe you played some of the games that got ports to later systems that were originally Dreamcast games. Thank you very much to anybody who watched, and I'll catch you in the next one. Huh?